Welcome to another He Said, She Said, and this is Ronald Johnson. And first time tuning in as myself. And what I do is I help people tired of who they are and where they are in life. If you're looking to get better relationship with yourself and with others, this is where I can help you. Because the first relationship is always with yourself because that relationship will allow you to hit it out the park. Denise, your turn. Absolutely. And I'm going to catch that ball. I'm Denise <laughs> Lewis and I have, I'm a performance-based coach because <laughs> my website is www.grandslamcoaching.com. And obviously if you are on the athletic field, in the courtroom, the boardroom or the classroom, I can help you make every day, boom, a Grand Slam day. It's almost April. It's almost opening day. I'm so excited. Um, and Ron, I'm really happy to be here again today. This is number 11, I believe that we've done number 11 coming at you so number is 11 a, 11 a good number or bad number i don't know one in one is two so you're <laughs> one by one together we make two here we are doing it again i love it so hold on hold on i don't follow sports so as baseball season officially started what um what is it uh what not customers what uh fans or no uh rumor has it Nothing is official yet. Opening day is always April 1st. Opening day for the San Francisco Giants in Oracle Park is April 9th. While Oracle Park has been approved to have fans, limited number of fans. We don't know what that exact number is because San Francisco is obviously in the good, the best tier. And what I also don't know is because I work in the Gotham Club, which is a private member only club within the stadium. I don't know what that means as far as having members in to that closed awesome. space, despite the fact that because it's right behind right field where the uh, where the right field um, scorecards are, you know, for the other games. So there's all sorts of breeze and stuff coming through. I don't know. I'm waiting. We'll see and find out. Well, I mean, it's good. I mean, sports for almost a year has been gone with the exception of uh, NBA played, some basketball played, football played, but it's been no fans. So I'll see what happens we'll see what happens right we will see what happens more, more important today is all of us have read a book some form or fashion and today's topic is don't judge a book by its, it's cover. cover and we all are victims of judging i've judged numerous times i also created a called complex equivalent which means this equals that what are asking questions but more importantly, the first books you ever pick up and read, the very first book, is a book about yourself. Mm -hmm. So me, or about yourself. Because that's the book you have for the rest of your life. You can read a Shakespeare, you can read a David Hawkins, you can read whatever book. You also can put those down and pick it back up. But your book, not only it does it have a cover, every single page after the first second third fourth page is blank because you can always write a new story or yeah. you can always judge yes so i'm gonna hop into this and talk about judgment and self-judging so what we all need to know that we we are always critical of ourselves first and we're always comparing ourselves to others so if someone has better education someone is quick at you know figuring out a math problem. Someone's quick at understanding how to write a paper or writing a book, whatever. We always right compare ourselves. Yeah, we always compare ourselves to others. And why do we do that? Why do we judge ourselves based, based on someone else's completion or competition? Or like success. I, our success. What, I mean, we, we always do these things and, and why? So Denise, tell me why do we do this? Well, there, there's kind of a twofold thing in there. Um, there is, first of all, there's the, the competition driving yourself to be better and saying, oh my, you know, gosh darn it, Ron beat me again. You know, I'm going to train harder. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to study more. I'm going to do what it takes because there's the thrill in the victory and there's the thrill of the challenge. And then there's the other side of that of comparing me to you by saying, God, God damn it, you know, Ron's really tall. You know, Ron's really muscular. Ron has all of these things. Ron's got that great light in the background that should be red, but is actually like more of a fuchsia orange. But I don't have a light like that. Why don't I? Mm -hmm. So there's 
the healthy competition side and then there's the judgment side and to go back to one of our first podcasts that we did ron when i point a finger at you i've got three Ah. me so compare there's compare contrast competition versus i want i guess now we're going into the biblical you know 10 commandments here do not covet thy neighbor or thy neighbor's possessions you know you have to go you do have to go out and earn it is what i'm saying sorry it's lent it's easter i bought the easter candy last night i'm you know getting in touch with my share you know yeah and where's my candy you didn't share hang on i'll go get it hang on (laughs) at least show me virtually if you can yeah i know She really wants to go get her candy, guys. So she is on it. Look at that. She wants to go get her candy. So okay, she everybody what she got. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. For my number one son, the Grand Bunny. Oh, I love it. And the rule in our house is until the ears are gone, once the ears are gone, it's fair game. Ooh, love it. Okay. So his way of doing that, he figured it out when he was about six. He started with the feet. And then, and, then, want to get to? and then kept saying, but the ears are still there. You can't have any. So, oh. yeah, did. aha, love it. For me, we have the Reese's. Ooh. Ooh, my favorite. I love Reese's. I know. So we can share those. And then for my mother, two calorie Sue, who is so into, <clears throat> oh my God, last weekend when she was here, it's like, you really want to have another bite of that food? She loves peeps, but of course she won't eat them because God forbid they're more than two calories. So I got her the fake peep. Oh, awesome. Look at that. Yes, it's the right? chain thing. So it's the peep that keeps on giving. It's soft. It's cuddly. No calories. And no Boom, calories. It, it's you forever. Peep drop. Okay. So that's Easter. We've covered that one. So Aaron, and, all people, you're covered, your son's covered, and mommy's covered. Look at that. And mom's covered, and now Coco, I know, baby, I got to get you too. I'm getting her bone. <laughs> yeah, that's all she needs. <laughs> that's all she needs. Absolutely. So, okay, so we digressed for a moment there, and we were talking about compare, contrast, covet thy neighbor, covet thy neighbor's things, um, and there's kind of a fine line between each of those emotions, if you think about it. There really is. And you know what? The, the thing that we always think about is we don't understand or truly define what success means to us mm-hmm. and what happiness means to us. So if someone is tall, muscular, or someone has a certain amount of wealth or a certain amount of cars, a certain amount of degrees, we deem that success. Yes, we do. Success and we deem if we have this, we'll be happy. Well, we deem that being successful because it is it it is implied that with all the degrees and all the education that the true success, which is usually measured in a monetary tone, tone is going to come with that. Right. And that's what people then point at that person, speaking is pointing back like, man, if only I had those degrees, I would have X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. But what they fail to realize is that it's not the degrees that make it happen, it's the motivation and the drive and the determination that gets those degrees that then gets the success. Right, so that guy has multiple degrees, our girl, he Mm -hmm. or she, they had a specific why and a specific driving factor, the reason why they accomplished that. They didn't all of a sudden look up in the sky and these degrees fell in their lap. No, they knew specifically what they want to do they know specifically what they're going to accomplish and how they're going to accomplish. They got it done. So to compare yeah. yourself to Joe or Susan, you got to compare what they did to get there. Yeah. What 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 A B C D F they do to actually get it. But more importantly, we always if we achieve just a little bit more, we'll be a little more happier. So do you think the guy with multiple degrees, our girl, are happy, Denise? Well, that depends on the individual person. And not only does that depend on how you define success, but how you define happiness. I was a person who for a long time felt that happiness meant I was going to have a husband, children, my own family. Mm -hmm. I'd have this, you know, 
every Sunday or every holiday, there would always be lots of people around my table. And you know what? It's my mom and my son and me. Are you happy? And, and, and now I'm happy. Ah, because my three siblings live far, far away. So we don't, I can't remember. I think the last time we were together was 10 years ago. All of us. I know we, we see each other like part bits and pieces here, but like all of us together. So, and now with COVID, you know, whatever, but I had to really define happiness for me. I had to write a new chapter in my book Mm. for me because my son is healthy. He's going to get through school and with all of his learning issues and disability that that's a huge thing he's not going to harvard thank god but he's going to get there and i am you know once again reinventing myself for the big third career change and while i'm doing trying to get this coaching business up so i can do this and have a little bit more flexibility with my time i now have to to make ends meet and keep the roof over my head do this little side career at safeway which kind of sucks the energy from doing what I really want to do, which is coaching. But that's okay because I can't do anything without a roof over my head, food in my stomach and my son dressed and fed. Awesome. So my new happiness is I'm getting it done. I don't know how, but I'm getting it done. And you know what? The rewards will come. So take a step back. Let's take a step forward. Is that what this old saying goes? Two steps forward, one step back. Oh, I love that even more. Yep. You hit something right on the head for me, or nail on the head. So my idea of success was this. 25 years old, two kids, white picket fence, a lassie dog, make six figures a year. And obviously I'm married and that's it. Like there's nothing past that. And I would call those the old school paradigm that if I had these things in our elements in my life, I would be very happy. But what really come down to is, wait a minute, hold on, let's, let's account, take an account. I'm now 37, going to 38. I do have a dog. I do have two kids that are 17, 16. Mm-hmm. Um, have been married, that's a different story. But you know what? Even though I didn't get exactly what I thought would be the happiness, I'm damn happy I didn't get all that right then and there. Mm-hmm. I'm happy at 25. I didn't have all that. Well, at 25, you might not, you wouldn't have appreciated it. Oh, you're in my mind, Denise. I at know. 25, there's no one in the world I would have appreciated having any of that. Mm-hmm. You no, know, because you just don't have the amount of experience, the amount of love, the amount of fairness, the amount of just exposure to all different lives. More importantly, my own personal experience. At 22, I filed for bankruptcy. I was dead broke. So I had that experience. It wasn't until recently, I had horrible credit. I mean, it was hard to get $500 approved for for a credit card. If you were going to get $500, they wanted like $300 security deposit down, whatever they call it. Yeah. Yeah. So those are what's worth it. Yeah. Obviously, I was doing real trick credit. It was hard getting able to find love because I always thought I wasn't the problem. They were the problem. Mm-hmm. Oh, so remember, three, one thing pointing at you, three pointing back at me, so I'm the problem. Yes, and we, and we talked about this like in podcast three or four about you know who really is the problem and, and the fact that it, it, it can be easy and it is a very natural thing to say, well, of course, Ron, it's you. you know, it's not me, it's you. Yeah. It, yeah. Takes a lot of, it takes a lot of work and just a lot of courage to say, where is my level of responsibility in this failure as and that's why people are very people that are successful are very successful because they say well well first thing i learned one thing more important after all that realize i have an effect mm-hmm. right so there's two things i want you guys to understand there's two elements of life you can't be both you have to be either one you can be the cause of life or the effect of life mm-hmm. when it came to relationships I'm up. Oh, no, I'm the effect of it. Uh, God gave me the idea of having bad relationships. God has blessed me bad relationships. I got to play the card, hands I was dealt, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Once I turned that quarter around, 
from the heads to the tails and said, you know what, I'm the cause of this. It's when life actually got better instantly. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So that's mm -hmm. why 25, I could not appreciate not a cent of that. Now, and there are people at 22, 18, 25, 30, you know, th much earlier who can appreciate that. More power to you. Mm -hmm. I totally respect that. I was married young. I, I just ended my second marriage. So between two men, I've been married 27 years. So, I know. and both divorces were relatively painful. The second one is way more painful than the first. Mm -hmm. um, but for, while I would like to have a partner, I would like to have a partner. I don't need to have a partner. And there's a big difference in that statement. Huge. Mm -hmm. Huge. Because as we talked about earlier, by having, by thinking, if I had a partner, I'll be happy. So until I have a partner, I'm not happy. You're mm -hmm. realizing now that I'm happy with Denise and my son and my mom. I'm just peachy. Yep. Because until you're happy with yourself, until you get to that point in your book where you're comfortable in your own skin, mm -hmm. where you're okay by yourself and you know that you're fine by yourself. Now, the, then the next chapters come with, now I've got this great partner. Now I've got this, now I've got that, you know, get your good energy together and you'd be amazed at what is now that good energy now becomes a magnet. It sure does. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, let's say, for example, you had a book, right? Life is a long book. So it's not 100 pages. It's probably thousands of pages, probably millions. Who knows? Is my life, this question for you, Denise, is my life determined by the previous pages or determined by the current page I'm on right now? Ooh, I guess that all depends on your energy level. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. There are people who are extremely negative, and there's a couple that I work with who are just negative Nellies. Oh my God, it's always eh, 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 eh. because you know they're so busy looking at the past that they can't see the future. They can't even see the right. Ooh, I'm blind, baby. Yeah, they are the see no evil. So then there's the people who I think are on the current page, who I think are probably. You're no evil. They just want to stop the world. They want to get off. They want to sit here and not move. Mm. And then there's the speak no evil people who are the people who can't wait to turn that next page because they want to take in more information, more information, new experiences, all this other stuff. And the way that they share it, since they are the, you know, no speak people, they write it down to share with everybody else. How does oh. that resonate with you today? Uh, the la I'm on the last one. I Right now, so I, Einstein had a law. We are the future, sorry, the past, the present, future in one. And mm -hmm. that really means is that we're a reflection of what happened behind us. We're a reflection of where we want to go and we're a reflection of where we are right now. Mm -hmm. So the way I live my life is not based upon the previous hundreds of pages that I've written and all the experiences. My life really is based upon the blank page I have in front of me and the page that I'm gonna write. So I'm gonna write that blank page. Then I'm, gonna, I'm already thinking about writing the second page because I know right now at this point, this time, I'm creating my future self. I'll tell you a good experience. Just like the best experience I ever had in my life. I don't know why, but I'll tell you why. Two experiences. And this experience happened just two hours ago. Those are on PST, it happened early this morning around 6.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. long, more like four hours ago but so for a lot of years i've been known as a trainer mm -hmm. so i've been stuck with two identities ron johnson the personal trainer the bodybuilder dude now ron johnson the behavioral mindset post psychology practitioner so I'm, I'm in the middle right right so how i'm known by this the pt the personal trainer i i can't cross roads to get to the next one because I'm stuck here with this identity and lo and behold because I know what I know about training been doing for so long it's easy to default back to that it's easy to go back to personal training it's easy to go back to that but is that what Ron wants in the future pages big x 
Right. But remember, though, yeah, but remember though, sorry to interrupt you, Ron. It's just like me and Safeway. They're short term, keep the roof over your head mm -hmm. to get to that. Because every time you do another PT right now, you are putting a, a brick of slat or something, building that bridge over to Ron the coach. Just like every oh, yeah. time Safeway, I'm building that bridge to Denise the coach. Oh, yeah. I certainly believe in that. I certainly believe in that. But I also know that I old identities can hold me hostage if I don't let them go. Because the ego gets in the way and says, hey, you know this. Why, why are you doing something you don't know? Why are you, why are you challenging yourself with something you know? Why don't you just do what you already know? It's fine. Just, just go with, you know, don't, don't get out of your side of your comfort zone, Ron. Stay there. So what I did, I had RJ Health and Fitness shirts I've had. I used to wear them when I used to personal train one-on-one, -on -one, especially in the space of being inside the gym. Mm -hmm. I took all those shirts, because remember, everything has energy. Mm -hmm. I put them in a plastic bag, mm -hmm. and I'm going to dispose of those. And the reason why I'm going to do that is I'm going to let the old ego no longer control what I'm going to be. I'm not saying I'm not going to take this one bricks and lay my house, because obviously I want to uh, get that bridge. But those things do not define me anymore. I'm creating a new identity. I'm stepping into that higher power. And I feel so in love with the fact that I am. That so that's awesome. my example. Now, let me ask you this. When you go and take those shirts and dispose of them, because you were such a good washer and everything's in good nick, are you donating them to a homeless Ooh. shelter? Or are you donating them to Goodwill so that people can have those good shirts because you don't wear them out, honey. I've seen your shirts. Interesting you say that. I was just going to throw it right in the waste receptacle and be done with it. But you know what? Why I give back? Why do I take yeah. that energy and give back to somebody else? So yes, I will be donating those shirts to the Goodwill, Salvation, or whatever it's supposed to buy here in Bellingham. And that's spring forward like we talked about last week. It's not working for you right now, but that will certainly work for someone else. I love it. All right. Thank you for that new insight. I'll be doing that today. Mm -hmm. I'll be doing it right after this. I have a client to train and then I'll be going, not just to work out first, then I'm dropping off my local salvation. I'm saying, hey, here's some shirts. If you guys want it. Here you go. Yeah, because remember the present page where you're being stuck on is the hear no evil because this is, I don't want to hear any new ideas. The people who are negative Nellies, they don't want to see any new ideas. And when you go turn that page, you are the, I'm not going to speak any bad ideas because you are putting out nothing but positive energy mm -hmm. because you're absorbing all these new ideas, new visions, new everything, because you're turning the next page of your book. And back, yes. to, your, and back to your idea about the, our books are millions of pages long. I think that you can only actively read 150 pages at a time. So every time you flip the page and add a new one, another one's going off into the magic cloud archive over here. <laughs> Does that make sense? So your book is only so big, right? The book is only so thick because this is what we want to focus on is right here. Okay, I got another one for you, Dan. So if a book is only so big, then we have a different, uh, I guess you would say different volumes because the same person I was five years ago is the same person I am now. The same person I was six months ago is the same person I am now. So every book we're getting, we put in a new volume, whatever that volume is, and write new pages. What do you think about that? Well, I agree with that. But every, every time you add the 151st page, the first page goes off into the cloud of storage. Yes. To save space because you want the book to only be so big at a time in a consistent way because you don't want it to bog you down. Don't get bogged down in yes. your story. You can always yes. you can always go up into the cloud and say, oh my God, I got something funny to tell you, Ron, which happened to me 10 mm -hmm. or 15 years ago. Pull down that memory, shove it back up. But you can only carry around so much before it distracts you and weighs you down. That is 110% true because you can create these stories that are old, 10 to 15 years old and can weigh you down 20 years later. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, they can weigh you down. They can weigh you down so much that you can't see anything past today or tomorrow. Which and they can be stories that are created when you're seven years old. Which is why you're the negative Nelly, which is why you don't welcome any ideas, why everybody everybody else has everything else and why do you have, and you've got nothing. 
and it's not fair and it's not right and see what i mean because you're bogged down in the volumes that you're yeah. trying to bring around it's like taking those big college books and trying to carry them all at once you're like oh, oh right. yeah <laughs> Well, what's funny though is, you know, now I've told you, Ron, that I'm back in school for Safeway and um, everything's on ebook now. Oh, yeah. Which is kind of freaking me out, I got to say, because you got to pull up an assignment, got to read it, and they highlight what you need to read to answer those questions, and everything else gets dimmed. And it's like, isn't this part of the process to figure out what you need to highlight yourself? But they do it for you. So I'm not sure if I'm being dumbed down or other college students are being dumbed down or if it's just, we want you to focus on what's important because we've discovered that smaller bits of information, if spoon fed to you uh, at, the, at the precise drop rate, you will actually retain it, use it and go forward. I don't know, I'm, 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 I haven't made a decision on that yet. Oh, interesting. Because mm. I'm, well, first of all, because I'm still trying to find my way around the whole canvas system and what I've got to do and when. And, and of course, I'm like, okay, my teenager's on canvas. And they're like, oh man, you've got an advantage. I'm like, no, he really sucks at it too. So we're the blind leading the blind. So, so anyway, it's kind of funny. So, with that being said, what is the biggest takeaway you have from this about don't judge a book by its cover? Well, a little personal experience from last night at work. Okay which is what led me to get home an hour late. This woman came in, what did it say, Friday, Thursday? She came in Wednesday night. She came in about 11 because God knows why we need to be open till midnight now instead of 11 p.m. Anyway, she came in. She was drunk. She was trying to buy more alcohol. She was really out of it with a, a food stamps card, which you can't do. And anyway, off she went. She came in again last night about 25 minutes before we locked up, the, before I locked up the store because here I am the person in charge. And I saw her come in and I was like, oh man, I do not want to go three rounds with this woman tonight. So I gave her a few minutes and she had gone back by the bakery. So I went back and I knocked on the door. She hadn't locked the bathroom door and I opened up the door and there she was sitting on the toilet, passed out, oh. passed out cold. So I tried to revive her. She kind of looked at me like, uh, you know, she had been crying. There were tears, whatever. And I was like, I just want to go home. Wow. So I sat on the toilet. Passed out on the toilet. So I'm like, okay. So I called the police, the Walnut Creek police. I was like, what? Fine. I'll just call the police. Let them deal with it. So I call them. I give her a description. And they're like, oh, do you want to press, press, press trespassing charges? I was like, no, no, no. You know what? She's homeless. She's drunk. Just, I just, I just want to go home. So they came and there were three officers, actually four officers and they go into the restroom and then they come out and they said, thank you so much for calling. This is actually a missing person. Wow. Was she drunk? Yes. Was she stoned or high on something? Absolutely. Did she need professional medical help? Absolutely. She did. They said, but this is a person who's been missing for over a week now. Thank you. They said, we've called an ambulance. Could you go wait out by, wait up by the front door to, you know, flag it in because now it's, I called the police, I think at 20 to 11, maybe quarter to 11. By now it's after midnight and I've got the, the doors locked and I'm trying to figure all this out. So get the thing, did all that. And so uh, here I thought there was this woman who was just drunk. I didn't want to be bothered with it. I called someone to take care of it. It turned out it was someone who truly needed help. Wow. How old was this person? They in their 40s, 50s, 60s 40s. or young or what? 40s. 40s. Wow. 40s. So that was good and, you know, got her the help that she needed. Mm -hmm. And thankfully she didn't make a mess of the bathroom because it was already clean. I didn't have to clean it again, which was perfect. Just, um, small bonus for me, you know, a little selfish of me to say that. Oh, and boom, I, badass Denise. Boom. And um, one of the police officers asked me out on a date. <laughs> oh, that's the bonus. That's a good thing you did call. That's the bonus bonus. Yes. Yes. So we're having a drink on Sunday if he shows up. So anyway. But, but see, I just assumed it was just a drunk homeless woman. I found out it was someone who had been missing who truly needed help. So don't judge a book by its cover. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Which is what's been sitting on my brain since one o'clock in the morning. So I was really glad today when you said, what's our topic? I said, oh my God, I have it. Don't you put, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's a big takeaway, guys. 
don't judge not just the situations around you, but also yourself. Remember, one thing important for be pointing backwards. Exactly. We can't, we don't know someone's experience. We don't know someone else's why. We don't know what they're doing in their life. We don't know their focus. We don't know their ambitions. The best way to go around curiosity is two questions. What would I learn? And what curiosity do I have? It was the best, best question. So I want to say, guys, again, thanks for listening to episode 11 on Yay. He Said, She Said. And this is Ronald Johnson. And if you're tired of who you are, where you're on life, go to www.ronjohnsoncoach.com. I want you to either bing, hit the discovery call button, or bing, join one of my master classes on positivity. This is where I can help you. And I'm Denise Lewis, and I'm with www.grandslamcoaching.com. I want every day to be a Grand Slam day for you. So if you want to improve your performance on or off the field, please reach out to me and send me an email. I'd be happy to talk to you. And uh, Ron, let's go have a Grand Slam day today. Boom. Boom. Get out of here. Thanks, yes. Denise. Yeah, thanks, Ron. I'll see you next week. Next week. Yep.